Nya. Oh. Oh. Nya. Ooh, yes, here we go. We hopped up on that bus. Burr, chill, high, Roger and Lowey crushing friendly Gus. Bulldog vision, all these boys see is red. What a crappy life, R.I.P. Ed. Heights GMC, you're collecting all the dust. We want the smoke, so come fire it up with us. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the one and only Big Ugly Sports Show brought to you by Premier Properties of Dublin. We are your first and your only source for mediocre, below average, subpar sports coverage. Glad you could join us today. My name is Chill. The whole gang is not here this morning. We lost two, added one. Some would call that addition by subtraction. So let's see who is here with us this morning. Fussing or fighting, yeah, we get up on that bus. Burp. Give me a little while. I can't see right. the buttons. Sitting over there to the far side, he is a Seminole for life, and he's lost a ton of weight, but he's still fat. His diaper needs changing regularly. He's got a tick like slice and napkins for hands. He's big. He's sloppy. He is Big Raji. Good morning, guys. In honor of Height not being here. I really think, you know, last was it two weeks ago when you, just you and Height did the show? Unfortunately, and, and yes. Everybody said how terrible it was, like the lowest range you ever had. I thought mm-hmm. we're not going to have that today. Well, we set the bar really low. Um, so. Would not expect anything less? The other guy on set right here, sitting between us, much better looking than Height, some would say. Um, That's not saying a whole lot. Is no. the winner of the uh, Raider auction that we had a few weeks back where we auctioned off a spot on the Big Oak Sports Show and he is a loyal listener and a loyal fan, current West Orange student, JT Bowers. JT, how are you doing this morning? Great. Great. Let's, yeah. Well, give us some applause. Let's give us some applause right there. So, JT won, and, and I really just got to ask JT, you, you know, you I know you left that day and your parents uh, hung around and took care of the auctioning for you, so like when you left, did you say Hey, mom and dad, you know, at whatever cost, like, spare no expense for the Big Ugly Sports Show I want to be on. It was either between this or the cheerleader birthday party, but I think I made a good choice with this one. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, cheerleader birthday party. And you got pizza with the cheerleader birthday party. We really don't have much to offer other than... I mean, just hanging out, Yeah, which is not a great hangout time. So so JT and them won it, and if you recall, we, we talked about it a little bit on an episode previous, but... Uh, I was in attendance, and um, you know, a, you, we had to submit some big ticket items as sports uh, of things we could auction off to raise money for the Raider Booster Club. And we thought, you know, what what more of a big ticket item than a spot on the Big Ugly Sports Show? I mean, you put that right in there with uh, vacation trips, hunting trips. Uh, all kind of the different high dollar things, and so the auction started. Each of those items would start like around fifty, some a hundred bucks, and then they would bid all the way up. Well, the disrespect shown to Big O Sports was pretty uh, standard. Yeah, and it's like anything I've never I've ever <clears throat> seen, and and so the bidding started at one dollar. I feel a lot of that's on Coach Clayton for trying to hold us back. And Miss Bill. And Miss Bill. Yeah. And we're just trying to make it out, you know? And nobody's trying, trying to give yeah. <laughs> trying to get out of the hood. <laughs> we're trying to get out of the hood. And nobody <laughs> wants to help us. So the bidding started at a dollar and then it was quiet for just a few minutes. And then I began to like sweat a little bit. And I was like, Man, this is embarrassing. Like like it was it was meant to be funny, however, like I was it hoping it was funny. more than a dollar. Then I heard somebody say two. And then we got to five. And then it turned into a bidding war and got us all the way up to, I think, 45 bucks. So that's a $45 I, I think Bowers' dad was willing to kill Izell to, to make, be able to get – for him to get this spot. Yep, Isaiah Coach Izell Stevens was bidding hard. We're going to get Izell on the show regardless for free, but it would have been nice to have his money also. But yeah, JT better looking than, than Mike Epps anyways, right? Oh, yeah. Didn't you shout, out, shout out to happy birthday to Mike Epps, that boy Day Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to talk about uh, JT's uh, – we've – you can tell us a little bit about yourself, but most people around here know you. You know, you're you're a senior this year? Junior. Junior. And uh, you've been a wrestler for Coach Lawhorn and Coach Hightower. In your freshman year, you finished? Third at state. Finished third at state. And then last year? A one state. One state. So we're, are, it's three time in the, in the plan. That's, that's the vision, yes. Okay. Can you kind of talk about, though, like – 
how you because you do you go to storm the storm center as well? Yes, I do. And and Hyatt was your middle school coach at some point. Mm-hmm. Coach, I, I feel like you know again this is just the outside looking in, but you have been able to do all this with bad coaching. Can, can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Minus the storm center. Minus the storm center, correct. But everything else from middle school and high school. Can you talk about how you're able to overcome bad coaching to do what you've been doing? Yeah, um, every day at practice, there was some, like, uh, there's just a stench at practice. I really don't, whenever there was coaching going on. But, uh, yeah, I had to deal with that adversity also. And then once I get to the high school, you just you just miss Lawhorn some days. I don't know where he goes. He goes outside of the practice room. And it's just like, where is he at? So sometimes I have to take over practice and then – He'll come back though. Just but, needs a mental break. Mm-hmm. Okay. It is a lot. It's a lot to run a program for sure. So, how would you describe Height as a coach? What were his like? You if know, you could find some good qualities, what yeah. were they? Well, they don't have to be good, really. Just some qualities. <laughs> Just some qualities. Uh, he, uh, I guess hard you could to, say, hard to look at. Yeah, that he helped me a little bit with my mind. He would uh, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, he'd be, he'd be on mind. me and Cam Boston. About every day at practice, but I love it. That's, yeah, that's about it. Not much quality to talk <laughs> <Yeah>. about. <laughs> I appreciate your height, but good bus driver. Yeah, he was. He got he you was. from A to B. Got you where you needed to be, and I that's th- half the battle. One time we were going to uh, Tifton to wrestle. It's like five in the morning. He has the air condition on the whole way, and this is like midwinter. We get about five minutes from the the wrestling where we're wrestling at. He's like, guys, I figured out how to turn the heat on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it might have been one of those things, too, though. You know how, like, and Roger, you could speak to this as a teacher. You know how sometimes after lunch or, you know, if, if you don't have the air on in your classroom, certain people carry, like, a little mm-hmm. odor, and that air feels like it helps get it out. Well, high early in the morning, mouth, like. Oh, yeah. What are you? Rough. Yeah. Bruh. So I mean, talk about that. Can you talk about that microphone right there? It's got a, it's, yeah, I can. I got a little whiff of something when I first sat down. That's that hype yeah, mic there. That is. That is. I mean, you can pour a thing of mouthwash on, it and it's not gonna make any difference. <laughs> so hype <height laughs> probably be bleached. Probably just crank the air up. It's really more more probably helping y'all out because if that if that stench carried the bus, it probably it it put y'all in. But it would not have helped your mind. So I feel like that'd make you drop weight. <laughs> <laughs> you just be sweating out hype. <laughs> just be rough. Oh man. <laughs> And yeah. old law. So you've got a yeah, you couldn't ask for I mean you got two of the bus crew that have made you help make you who you are today. So a hey, shout out to Hyatt for just for getting his mind right. And Mitch for you know, that's probably Mitch's coaching strategy is to develop leaders and part oh, of that is step out with. and see who we'll see what leadership takes over. And I know with Chase Horn he was able to do that. So mm-hmm. maybe the torch has been passed where Law can just step out in the room for a minute and you know, they say once you run, like you do so good in a program, it kind of runs itself. I feel like that's kind of where we're at with, with wrestling. Law can just kind of pass it off. And, you know, they say that, you know, good teams are coach led, great teams are player led. Wow. That's profound, Rush. It is. You know, th- thanks to Lawhorn for giving Bowers the opportunity to do that. That would be a you great, know, great coach move. It would be. Hmm. That's why Mitch is the best to ever do it. Some have said. Better than MT? Who's done more with less? Mike Thompson or, or? MT. Definitely. I mean, but no, nobody's topping Danny Johnson. That's true. Nobody tops DJ. But I mean, but Mike. I mean, you know, sometimes things start. Things are given to Thompson every now and then. You know, he doesn't have to work for things. You know, every now and then. <laughs> oh, so uh, JT also uh, last was it last year? I know I'm getting confused right now. It was year before we won, or was it last year? One year before we won state yeah, two, as a team. Two years ago. Yeah. So, in traditional and mm-hmm. and. Uh, duels. Duels. So tell us a little bit. You were a freshman then. Mm-hmm. Kind of tell us a little bit what that felt like to be able to do that his freshman year well it was it was pretty cool but it just kind of the team was so loaded that we had it just, whenever they all left it just kind of left emptiness in yeah. the room my sophomore year but yeah I, it was something i wish we could do again by at least my senior year before i leave but i think i think we really could have a shot my senior year okay well, that, that's awesome that you guys did that anyway. So, JT Bowers is going to hang out with us this show. He's got his picks for later. But right now, uh, we're going to talk a little bit of Braves baseball. And I know neither one of you are avid. Can we talk about who's in attendance for Braves baseball for yes, game one? On the law. And, and, and I've been – 
Yes, go ahead. No, I, w- I want you to kind of elaborate because well, you're, you're a better, not storyteller, but you can lay things out better than I can. Sometimes. And I don't fudge as much. I don't really fudge that much. So just maybe a little I, bit. Height went to the Braves game. Him and his wife, Jeremy, went. And this is the second time in a week the Heights went and the Braves lost. This time happened to be a playoff game. So but Height needs to quit going to the Braves game. That, that's kind of where I'm at on it. But the one thing about Height now, and, and, and this is with anybody really, but Height's not going to pass up a free ticket. And he gets more free ticket opportunities than anybody I've ever seen in my life. And I don't know how people just want to give him handouts. And he will. Well, we, but we called him for a handout, all right? <laughs> 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 he's got open, oh, he's open handed all the time. He's like, height's like that guy, like you know when you get off the exit and there's that guy that's asking for money. <laughs> that's height, but a height makes money. So I don't understand how this continues to happen for him. Like he did our boy Jace when he got those those Morgan Wallen tickets yeah. and just cranked up the price on him. They're almost a thousand dollars per ticket. Mm-hmm. But again, that's how rich people stay rich is they don't pay for anything. So you were talking off air and like heights. I think it was Jeremy's cousin that gave them tickets. Put Hyde in that situation where Hyde has those tickets. Is he giving them to anybody? I mean, he'll, he'll give them, but there's going to be some financial, you know, gain involved. He's going to make some money off of those tickets. Just not just, hey, here, y'all go, my treat. Hey, yeah, y'all have a good time, man. I'm sorry I can't be there. It, it's going to be one of those, hey, I got some tickets now. Look, they're, they're about $400 a pop, man. But if you want to go, I got them right here for you right in the pocket. I'll get 250 each. I'll give you 250 each. And, and they were given to him probably at they that They were time. giving him for free. And he's going to charge 250 per ticket, yeah. That's exactly how that works. What a jerk, man. I don't understand it. But, again, that's how rich people stay rich. You know, it's, it is. Hey, that's it just is. hype being hype. It is. This handout hype. And out height. So, the height was there on on the uh, of the opening or the opening series, the opening game of the series. There we go. There we go. Where the Braves lost, but man, not not. You, you told me you're a playoff baseball, playoff Braves kind of guy, and I know Rod, you're you're. I don't really know where you are on them, but I mean, I surely really did play. y'all watch any of the game the other night? I did watch some of the games. Did you see the end of it? Yes, I did not. Okay. I went to sleep. Have you still yet seen the end of it? Uh, like, then they had like a double play or something to win. When that, yeah, I saw so, a, highlight, a highlight of it, but that was it. So Braves getting dominated all night. I mean, Zach Wheeler, just Georgia, Georgia boy, just not University of Georgia, but state of Georgia boy, just dialed in. I mean, just he, dealing. man, like seven strikeouts through the first nine batters against From what the you most said on the high air, powered offense. What you said on the air the other night when we were doing the football game, you said that you would strike me out. Like, I guess Wheeler is doing to the Braves. Yes. I'd strike you out right now, and I would have strike. Any time you take us from our high school days, which we were at I'm different times. high school. I'm yeah, talking right well, now. And but let me finish. On, Any time from then until we are currently living, I'd I'd strike you out 100. percent And I got a bunch of, and I don't even throw hard. I'd be hitting moon shots off you, dude. I would be hitting that thing over there across Springhaven. And again, I think you fail to remember that I've seen you play ping pong, and which is hand eye coordination, and it was horrific. It's different. It's hmm. different. It's too close, too close quarters. Would you say some similarities there, JT? Uh, I feel like there is a little bit. Yeah, but that's that's close quarters. I mean, I get that, I get that lumber in my hand, dude. I'm freaking dangerous with it. So when you got a second to react, it's oh my god, freaking bomb city. Okay, okay. But this may be something. If I didn't have such a bad shoulder, I, we this would be something we could. You got line a bad bod too now. I do, I do. The shoulder just goes right in there with it. But It'll just be know the this: least intimidating pitcher I've ever seen on a bump. But just know this: I, the first time, if I could hit you, I'm hitting you like my first pitch. Now I probably miss, but I'd be you trying mean, to throw it right at your coconut. Dang, you're going to headshot. Well, first? you're going to have a helmet on. Man, that's tough. There's that chance though that it could. Sl- you could turn it, could slide right under the helmet, catch the back of that neck hmm. or the front of that gullet, and knock that gullet off, and then that'd, that'd be, be doing you a favor. That'd be ideal because that takes me down to a 10. <laughs> <laughs> he's always said he's a double chin away from a 10, JT. Do you see – look at him. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, that's good. great game. Like I said, Wheeler dominating. They leave him in They leave him in a little while, a little extra because he's been dominating, and we end up getting the two-run homer off of him, make it 4-3. to three. They go to the pen. Braves – Braves fans have some life, Raji. I mean, it's four to three. It's been just abysmal the whole night. And then lights off. Everybody's phones on. They're chopping, right? They're chopping four to three. And then Riley in the bottom of the eighth hits a two-run home run to take the lead. And he reminded me now that the way you've described yourself with the lumber in your hand. Mm-hmm. Now that you say that, and I have that visual, like I see you in Austin Riley's body. 
because he and skill set he swung and essentially his his top hand came off of the bat so it, it almost turned into a one-handed swing mm-hmm. and it went out of the out of the park so is that where you kind of see yourself like yeah i think that's really accurate mm-hmm I don't have anything else to add on that. I mean, I yeah, I'm just, I got that visual. I'm getting everybody, if you're if you're riding on the road right now, just be careful with that visual, but um, that's where I'm at. And then the double play in the game was the most wild ending I've ever seen in baseball where Bryce Harper tried to, I guess he, he thought it was going to be down and knew he had to take off the score, and so he tears out. Money Mike makes a great catch. Austin Riley makes a phenomenal play backing it up, and, Fires in the first. Do you think that they? I mean, think the Braves can win the series now? Do you think that? Because I feel like if they lose there, I think this. If if they lose, it's a wrap. But yeah, if they would have lost that game, it would have been. I mean, then the Phillies have to win one out of the next three with two of those being in Philly, and that's just that's hard. So, I think we could look back on this series and say that that the Austin Riley swing and then the double play to end it. Who are they probably gonna play? The uh, Dodgers maybe. Well, the Dodgers are down 2-0 to the Diamondbacks. So really, mm-hmm. which I mean, I feel like we'd match up better with the Diamondbacks than the Dodgers, but we got to get past the Phillies first. So tonight, though, is Game Three in Philly. Oh, it's tomorrow. It's Wednesday night, ain't it Wednesday? I thought it was Thursday. Mm-hmm. I, think I think it's, it's tonight. Yes, yeah, tonight and I think it's tonight and tomorrow night, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh-huh. Um, so the Braves will the pitching still undecided on who's starting for the Braves. Nola starting for the Phillies. So some point today, the Braves lineup will come out. We'll see who's starting. But so are they playing both in Atlanta? Played like, the first two in Atlanta. Now the first. Let, so they're playing today and then travel to Philadelphia and play tomorrow night. Buddy, they've already played two in Atlanta. Oh, that's right. They're gonna play. They got that's two right. in Philly and then one back in Atlanta that's why I don't if need to. With baseball is too much going. Well, I mean that just be sports in general, like as far as yeah, how that works. I just don't keep up with it enough. I guess. I guess they're yeah one one. That's a good excuse. Yeah one one. So I'm, I'm full of excuses now. I can pull them out of a hat. All right, guys, if you will, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Make sure you stay with us on the other side of the break. We've got a special guest coming in, another special guest, and then we've, we're going to hear JT's Pick'ems and update you on the bus Pick'ems. Y'all stay with us. We'll be right back. For all of your commercial and residential real estate, as well as property management needs, give Premier Properties of Dublin a call at 478-274-1606. Their customer service is unmatched, and I can personally guarantee that they will work with you to get you the deal that you want. Again, that's Premier Properties at 478-274-1606. This is Brad Meeks, owner of Brian's Giant Subs. Thanks for listening to the Big Ugly Sports Podcast. Come see us today to grab your favorite sub, 1632 Veterans Boulevard in the Oaks Shopping Center, Dublin, Georgia. Are you tired of overpaying for your cable? Do you feel like you're not getting your money's worth? I've got just a solution for you, J2 Streaming Services. With over 9,000 live channels and packages starting at $15 a month, visit www.j2streaming.com. Bank of Dudley is proud to sponsor the Big Ugly Sports Show. Wherever you're listening to your favorite sports show, you can also be banking with your favorite bank. Bank of Dudley offers mobile and online banking platforms to make managing your money easy. Get on that Bank of Dudley bus. Bank of Dudley since 1905. Member FDIC. Big Peach Car Wash, located across from Walmart on Highway 80. They will be breaking ground soon. Make sure for all your car washing and vehicle needs to stop by Big Peach Car Wash, located across from Walmart on Highway 80. Blackshear Beverage, with two locations, located in the Cordial area on Highway 280 and Georgia 300. For all your beverage needs, be sure to stop by Blackshear Beverage. Elite Comfort Solutions. For all your heating and air needs, be sure to contact the gang over at Elite Comfort Solutions. Uh, You can visit them on the web. Just look at our Facebook page to see the link to that. Also, Sweet Onion City Exterior Wash. For all of your pressure washing needs, they they specialize in exterior low-pressure washing. So if you need that, uh, be sure to give Jackson Tool and the boys a call over at Sweet Onion Exterior Wash. So... Make sure you can you can find their information out on our Facebook page as well. And we also we do have a new commercial that me and Raji worked on a new commercial collage where all of our commercials are lumped in together with, where you don't have to hear just my voice the whole time and that will be airing next week with our new sponsors in there as well. If you would like to sponsor the Big Oak Sports Show, reach out to us. We would love to have you sponsors. We will promote you um, as best we can. So here we are. Let's take a – we've got a special guest um, that is – you come on in, Coach. Come on in. Okay, he's coming in now. So. 
champ, it's Jason Westbrook. When it comes to football, yeah, I'm the expert. Love autumn with football and falling leaves. What you said, keep that same energy, Steve. I used to block dudes, yeah, just like Warren South. Rapping for my city, putting no side on the map. Five star, I'm used to the big stage. Clock in, it's time for Respo's Rampage. Mm, what did that over does? Oh man, that is the, <laughs> the new Respert's Rampage intro. Uh, Respert came over, we got in the lab over the weekend and got that taken care of. So, Coach, glad you could join us this morning. I, I, I forgot how good I was lay down them balls. It reminds me back in high school, like me and my, my buddy used to, you know, we used to sit down after, after games and we was able to, to, to freestyle. So I still got it. Well, you still got it. I still I, and got that, it. that didn't take many takes with us either. I mean, we, we knocked that out real and when, quick. And when you're good. Just good. Hey, five stars, a five star. Five star mentality. And coach, we got a former student right here, JT Bowers, in here with us. Mm. JT, Coach Resper, you got to we'll tell him hey. Yo. Hey, good morning. It's good to have you. It's a, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity. So, coach, uh, before we talk about Tennessee football, big mm. game for them this week. Um, mm-hmm. I know that after football season, basketball season's coming in, and mm-hmm. you, you, hey, that round ball start bouncing. <laughs> You picked up, a, you picked up officiating as a hobby, um, and you're pretty good at it. You've climbed the, the bar, well, the ladder I, I, pretty quick. I, I don't know. I've, I've been pretty good at most things I do. Okay, I'm sorry I didn't take that into yeah. Take that into consideration. Put okay. some respect on my name. Okay. So, what do you think separates you as? Because, like I said, you know, when you were here as my assistant. Well, okay. For well, first and foremost, I haven't even finished the question. I don't even need you to finish the question. I can go ahead and answer. <clears throat> How many five stars you know officiate? How many five stars? Ain't nobody doing things I'm doing. Nobody's. I'm the one and the only. Now, the things that I have a hard time with, that's why I got to do JV games. I, you know, my condition ain't where it used to be. I can only go from half court to baseline. I can't go all the way up to down. I got to tell the other fish, hey, you got that size. So let me get this size over here. But you are. You've climbed like, var- You're doing some varsity this year. Did a little bit last year. So is that something you've kind of talked to the other officials? Like, hey, I'm going to make great calls when it's in my area, but outside of my area, I just fatigue-wise. Yeah, well, that's one of the things I tell the coaches. Like, look, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm going to do me. And these other guys are going to do this. I'm, I'm going to do what's right. Now, if it's a bad call, you need to go talk to them. Don't come to me. Don't come to me with that bad energy because I, I don't play that. What will you do to them? Will you bust them? There's, there's a good chance that I'm, I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you a warning. And then after that, burp, I'm going to hit you with that tee. And I don't, I, listen, I don't care. You better have a good assistant coach because you, your butt's going to be in that locker room. What if he tries to try you a little bit, though? He must not know who I am. He must have forgot. What's that? Like last time somebody tried me, I almost got a head bust to the white meat. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody problem with work, no worries with me no more. Got me messed up. <laughs> uh, JT, just uh, you have any questions for Coach Respert? I know you uh, you're a former student. You had him in <clears throat> PE. You know he's overdoing his big thing at Veterans. You know I know you enjoyed him as a coach. Do you miss him? A little bit. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And is it good to see? Would you say it's pretty good to see him in the studio this morning? Yeah. 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 Long time to <clears throat> see. Would you say he's changed a little bit, or kind of looks about the same? Kind of a little shorter, maybe. Just yeah, just a little bit. Well, I, you know, I, I haven't tried to slim down some. You know, I did. I, I went from I went from three eighty five to three fifteen. <laughs> hey, make 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 quick cooking all that good meal. Mm-hmm. See, now all we doing is eating. We, we, see, we go to Chick Fil A and eat kale salads. So I want to do. I, I want to eat that fried y'all bird. What is that over there? I want to be. Eat, I want to eat that lettuce, that tomato. I want to be in that. I want to be in that fried yard board with, with that macaroni. <laughs> oh hey, man! Get it together. <laughs> so, uh, the uh, playing Texas A and M this week, mm. and we're going to pick this game later amongst you know us with JT in here, and, and Rogers will be back in here then to do that. But what uh, what are your thoughts on the game versus A and M? Oh, you know, I think you know Both I one lost teams, I believe. Oh, uh, you know, we had a we had an off week last week. Uh, the game before that, we beat South Carolina. I think that we're gonna come out firing all cylinders. We're gonna be back healthy. I got we got Milton back there. You know, Milton reminds me a lot of almost Peyton Manning, just a little bit. You know, uh, you know we had Jason Wittens that tight end. We ain't got that no more. But I think that you know Coach Hoople, hey, Coach Hoople is gonna do a fantastic job. <laughs> He's gonna do a fantastic job. He's gonna get us ready. You know, Coach Fisher and them Aggies. You know, what I think, sometimes I think about, like, you know, we talked about volunteers before, you know. What is an Aggie? What do you even need that? What, I don't even know what an Aggie is right now. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to come out. We're going to come out fine. We're going to do what we do. And we're going to get that dog. 
Okay. And I, I, them dogs better be ready. Oh, that's all I know. Oh, that's all I know. I, I volunteer. Stand up. Stand up. UT Nation. All right, Coach. Well, we we appreciate you again coming all the way from Kathleen, Georgia, down to the studio mm. bright and early on Wednesday, and we know Looking you got like to get back. Right, ninety six. Hey, taking a scenic road in the morning, seeing ninety six. You know, I just I, I just I sit in my F one fifty, and I just look and I just sit, see them deers just run across the roads. I look, I, I see, I see that sunrise. Oh yeah, look at that sunrise. Oh yes, Come. but it's so nice. Mm. It's absolutely phenomenal coming in in the morning. Well, Coach, we're glad mm. to have you, JT. Thank you. And good to see you again, JT. Hey, best of luck to you and to the rest of your teams. Thank you. Keeps all keeps Coach Long working straight. Oh man, so that's Jason Restbrook, uh, former West Orange coach, now over at Veterans and former five star uh, center for the Tennessee Volunteers. So always great to have him, uh, and we appreciate him getting in the lab. We also have, and JT, you're going to get to participate in this one. We've got a, a dead for Ed say coming in, and uh, so what, what, I'll go ahead and kind of lay that out to you before I intro it. Um, I'm going to give you five, and you're you're not going to know some of these probably because I wasn't I was anticipating the other two guys being here too. But but you can always just let Ed die. Yeah. So you've got to make when the decision. Down, Ed, Ed and you die. were a student of Ed's. You've got to make the decision. These people have passed. Would you bring them back in exchange for Ed passing? And these are the five that I picked this week are five professional athletes that died while in their playing career. So too young is what we would call that. So let's intro Dead for Ed. Hey bro, what's up? Yeah, it's Ed. Wear my UGA practice jersey rep in red. I'm in Athens, I'm a proud resident. That's right, bro, Trump's still my president. Oh, I'm lying down, I might die up in my bed. Please bring me back, bro. It's dead for Ed. Like, come on, bro, please bring me back. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, there's one thing that I know, bro. I'm a damn good grass coach, bro. I'm literally one of the best in the nation, probably the best to ever do. I played quarterback at Georgia, I'm way better than this bro. Oh, come on, dude. <laughs> so that's that's Coach Stephen Edwards there on the mic for you. So I'm gonna give y'all five people, and the first one y'all aren't gonna know. This Ed is sounds one. like he sucks. Like everybody yeah. hates him. Such a There's dude. a reason that. Do we you have any second. fond memories of Ed? I know we just. Yeah, um, I added him on Snapchat and Instagram one time, and he just kind of looked at me and said, "I can't add you, buddy." I was like, "Why?" He never gave me a response. So my question would be, if you were a female, would he have accepted? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. It would have definitely accepted. Ooh. Um, I don't know about that, dude. Well, hey. So. Uh, good thing you're dead, Ed. <laughs> the first one we're going to start with, the legendary Dale Earnhardt. Oh, yeah, it's got to die. Yeah. got to bring back Dale, man. Praise Hill and praise Dale. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You, you agree? I'm going to have to go with Yeah, Dale. We're not even putting Ed six foot. We're putting Ed 12 foot under. <laughs> Brian. Dude, put, him, yeah, put him underneath the graveyard. Yeah, I'm an Earnhardt guy. Earnhardt's got to come back. Second one, and, and y'all aren't going to know this one. I was expecting Hyatt and Law to be here for this one. This is uh, Jesus Fernandez. So he was the Miami – I don't know if you remember. He was the Miami Marlins pitcher that – he ended up was dying in a boat, the boat accident. accident. Yes, but the reason I brought him up is because he was kind of disliked by the Braves and Braves fans for a while because he hit a home run in one game in Miami and he pimped it. And then, like, like you know, that's just something in baseball you're not supposed to do: stare it down, especially pitchers. This is back when pitchers were hitting. Yeah. So he's jogging the bases, and I remember Chris Johnson was playing third, and he's just giving it to him. And by the time he gets home, McCann has met him before he gets a home plate. The basically don't just for that, I'll bring Ed back. And so they, but the do the, this on the flip side of that, Jesus Fernandez is one of those guys you think because he died really young and he was good. Like how good would he have been? So I'm, uh, I'll bring your head back <clears throat> just for that. This is based on that one story. Okay. But it's Jesus. Jesus Fernandez. Yeah, I'm probably gonna bring him back. That's just. So we're going to keep Ed dead? Yeah. Gonna, okay. That's always the same way. <clears throat> yeah, it is. It is. I, I would probably bring Ed back here, too. And, I, you know, this is a situation, obviously, we don't like speaking of the dead. But for the segment, they're all dead. Even so. though we have an entire segment about killing off Edwards. Yeah. But, yeah, that's fine. So, and if Ed were to ever pass, obviously the segment would go on. would die, probably. <laughs> well, I mean, figuratively and literally. Then we would be using him, and would we bring him back for somebody else? Mm -mm. No. Okay. I, I feel like he's, he's R.I.P. Ed. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm bringing I'm bringing Ed back over over Hazers for Ned as well. All right, uh, football. Pat Tillman, dude, he's an American hero. Are you kidding me? 
the, 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 the closest too, thing, even open, the closest you know? thing that Ed ever did was get shoved in the trash can by David Pollock. <laughs> They're doing anything heroic. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely bringing Tillman back, 100%. Pat Tillman played for the Cardinals, what, safety? Yeah. And he left the Cardinals to go deploy and ended up getting killed in war. And so, yeah, definitely. Probably, probably him. Then. Yeah, 100% Pat Tillman. Pat Tillman's back. You have, do you have Bernard King on this list? And he played? No, he was, on, he was on the list that I was looking at, but I only mm-hmm. pulled five. And, again, I, I've got a couple on here that, I mean, that one, and then y'all are probably not going to know Payne Stewart. Payne Stewart was a golfer, good golfer, died, I believe, in a plane plane crash. So you would bring Payne's a good guy. I mean, golfer. You're he. Right. Would, so this is he yeah, would always you don't even wear. Have to be necessarily a good guy. If you're like just semi decent, you're probably coming back. <laughs> so you think golf attire? You think khaki pants? You know, sharp button up? You know, right. whatever. Blah blah blah. Well, Payne Stewart played in like high socks, looked almost like Irish. So I guess you would, with the pants like the bloomy pants that kind of rolled stopped at the knee. A kilt? And he wore no, it wasn't a kilt. It was actually pants, but. They just yeah. kind of stopped at the knee, and he had, would have some socks on. He would have the the hat, like the – I don't even know how to – Almost a little visor-looking thing. It looks like Philip when he's coaching at Blakely. Yeah, but it's a whole hat, and it's got – you know, it's a – Right, and it probably fits his head proportionally yep. like it's supposed to, and like it does with Unlike him. Unlike Phil. Shout out, Phil. Yeah. I saw – speaking of Phil, I saw a video on Facebook where I guess him and the defense coordinator were celebrating, and they jumped in each other's arms, and Phil almost took him down. Yeah. Yeah, what well, – Derek – shout out my boy Derek. You know, big win against Dublin the other night. Mm. Uh been able to stop them and Philip and them put up points, but Derek does need a forklift. There's yeah. no doubt. And Derek str- looks like a strong yeah, fellow. Yeah, Derek's an extremely like fit, strong dude. Uh, but when you got that freaking beach well manatee <laughs> jumping in your arms and Philip, you know, <clears throat> we, we never went back and talked about when we saw him. Uh, Go ahead. What better time? We'll finish the day for it after this. Yeah. So you know, we were talking. I said we, we were kind of guessing what Philip was going to wear when West Lawrence played Blackley. And shout out to the Raiders. You know, I had to send them back to Cochran, but. uh Anyway, I mean, so. and if you missed that call, be sure to tune in to TV 35's Game of the Week when we played Blakely. Raji finishes by yelling, tell him to get on the bus and go back to Cochran, which yeah. was great. I yeah. loved it. Oh, yes. Get back on that bus and go back 26th. Go back home. Um, but, no, so I was trying to I was trying to tell Chuck, like, what I think Phillip was going to wear. And I feel like I was pretty accurate. I mean, I was close. Who's going to have his, you know, his khakis on with this play sheet that was, I mean, dragging the ground. I mean, like, it literally was had scuffs from it being so long. Mm. Um you know, I said he was going to have on a tight Under Armour shirt. I was said it was going to be cut off shirt, but uh, I think or something like that. But he did have on that tight shirt, and my God, was it tight! Um, and then he had that uh, that visor on. I've told him before, like he Philip. I mean, Philip's my boy, love him to death. But he really describe Philip's dimensions though. Like for those that don't know, they're trying to get a visual like uh, height weight. Get just give a height weight rough estimate on your end. I would say Phil five eleven and a half, about four twenty five. Um, <laughs> He looks, he looks like he thinks he's Langley Kiffin, but he legit looks like he looks like. You ever seen the um, the mascot for the Syracuse Orange? Yeah, like the orange, orange. the big, just big, wide-bodied orange thing. Yeah. That's that's Philip. He's like a box Chevy, like a eighty. He's like or an eighty-six Buick. He's <laughs> what he reminds Cadillac. me of. Oh, Cadillac, Cadillac Phil. Some have called him. When Uh-oh. I say some, I mean me. But <laughs> shout out to Philip though, and as much as I clown on, big win for them beating the Dub. Yep. So yeah. Got a, got Je- uh, Jefferson County this week and then play play against that Swain and Swainsboro Tigers. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, sorry. So uh, have it all there. <laughs> um, all right, the last one. Football great. Sean Taylor. Dude, Sean Taylor was, in my opinion, probably one of the what's going to be one of the best safeties to ever play. Like that dude would come downhill and absolutely knock you clean out. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Hmm. Edwards versus Sean Taylor. Oh my God! And that slow spin move that Ed has, <laughs> dude. That dude was a stud, man. Dude, he and would not rip Ed. his body off. Like, he, he get he got he got shot. shot I think. What I thought. Yeah. yeah. I know you probably don't remember him either, JT. So I've just, heard a little bit about him. Redskin safety. What he played Miami. Yeah. He was Miami. on those teams that were. I mean, hmm. Sean Taylor was a dude. That I, dude. Yeah. He was that. He was him. He was Joel him before there was a Joel him. So. You've got Ed one for four today. Yeah, essentially. Ed's done. Did you have? Did you have? Any? I don't think I chose Ed. Yeah, it's out. Any. <laughs> so a little resentment in there from when Ed was your teacher, quote unquote teacher, but you know we can understand that. Yeah. So uh, he was our friend, and we want to kill him off. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to pause for our last commercial break. On the other side of this, you're going to hear our picks. We're going to update you on where uh, Coach Danny Johnson finished last week amongst our celebrity guest pickers, and we're going to hear JT Bowers make some picks for this week y'all stay with us we will be right back (music) 
Welcome back to the Big Ugly Sports Show brought to you by Premier Properties of Dublin. We are your first source and your only source for mediocre sports coverage. We're back. It's time for our picks for the week. And I'm going to update everybody real quick on where the standings fall. For the bus member standings, we've got a tight race for first between Law and Raji. Both at 31 and 29. Law had a big weekend uh, going 7 and 3. Raji went five and five, so they're both thirty-one and twenty-nine at the top of the list. Height in a somewhat distant third, but not too bad at twenty-eight and thirty-two. He had a was he three and seven as well? Is that what he said? So height was three and seven, not a great week for him. And then Chill coming in right on his heels, trying to make a comeback after the rough start. I'm at twenty-seven and thirty-three uh, in a five and five week. So. Again, we say that we're average to the below average, and those standings of our of our picks speak to that. Our guest picker update: Opie still on top at seven two and one. Jay at seven and three, and the goat DJ <coughs> comes in at seven and three with a big week last week. So seven and three out of ten is hard to do, um, and he did it. So he's going to be tied for second. Noah still sitting at fourth at four and six. I'm sorry, Jace at four and six. And then Noah holding up last at three and seven. Speaking of Noah, before we get on these picks, shout out to the West Lawrence Raider middle school football team uh, getting ready this week to yeah play with the play by the area play by the in the playoffs today actually I think, yeah yeah Are you yeah, pushing JT? No, yeah, I'm, I'm not slapping church, church tonight Wednesday night yeah yeah that right. takes precedent yeah, yeah we got we Jesus got is definitely more important than the fight Eddie Floyd's no disrespect there ain't much more important than Eddie There's, yeah I but, would say that. It's probably third on America's list is, is West Horns Middle School football. So we're going to talk about five games right here, um, and then JT's going to give me his other five picks for us to be able to keep our game of 10. So, Rogers, we'll start with you right here. And we we have asked, we asked Coach Resper about it a little bit earlier, and he feels good about Tennessee coming off the bye week. But you've got Texas A&M plus three and a half on the road at Tennessee going down to Neyland to take on the Volunteers. Who do you like there? Um, I'm going to go, as much as I hate to go with Jimbo Fisher, I think they have a big rebound week. I think they play Alabama really tough, um, and I think Alabama's probably going to end up winning the West. Uh, I think, uh, you know, Tennessee is a tough place to play, a tough place to play, but – I wonder, is that a 3.30 game? I hadn't even looked. That might be the um, CBS game. Sure, I mean, surely it's got to be. I haven't looked either. But I well, think – um, that th- helps to A and M, I would imagine, getting out of that night. Yeah, I think uh, I think A and M's going to win outright. I think they're going to go up there and pull the upset. I'm going to take the Aggies. Okay, JT, who you got on that one? I'm also going to take Texas A and M. Tennessee just really hasn't shown much for me this year. Losing to Florida, mm-hmm. me being a big Florida fan, that was really nice. Yikes! That's I didn't cool. realize you were. You might not have got about it on the show if I don't know that, but <laughs> too late. You're already here. So. All right, well, good. Now, let's stay in what that. What are you taking? Oh, I didn't even announce that. I'm taking Tennessee. I think Tennessee at home. Taking the fight in Resford. Mm-hmm. Now, Resford was out of line when he told the dogs to beware, but this ain't the dogs he has coming. Been, he has been known to be out of line. This ain't the dogs coming to town yet. So, uh, them Aggies. And them border, border Collies are coming to town. <laughs> border Collies. Can't bring the 12th man with them. So, I will take Tennessee. All right, uh, we'll start with you then right here, JT. Florida getting two points at South Carolina. I'm going to have to take Florida. It's Florida. I mean, South Carolina. Good. Hey, that's a good, good <laughs> synopsis right yeah. there. Um, I'm going I'm – taking, uh, I'm taking the game clocks at home. Uh, listen, Graham Mertz is sewage. Yeah. Graham Mertz is sewage. Uh, the, those guys are going to start, start quitting on Billy Napier, I'm telling you. It's, Come on, old Sunbelt? Sunbelt Billy. Listen, they're going to lose this week. They're going to lose to Georgia. That's going to put them out what? What's their record right now? They're like, not losing to Georgia. JT, that's absurd. That's, come on, dude. Listen, I'm as diehard as anybody to, to, to beat Georgia. It's not. I don't think anybody's going to beat Georgia. At all. I think they probably, there's a good chance they're going to repeat. There's a good chance. I mean, listen, I would love Florida State to beat them. Florida State's not touching Georgia. If they play, if Georgia I would say Florida the, State may be, of all teams right now, one of the ones that I would. would. We can't. There's no. We couldn't hold up physically four quarters, I, I don't think. Uh, well, maybe we'll find out. That'd be great. Yeah, I want to find out in the championship game in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But anyways, I'm taking. But you, but but you would also take finding out in the playoffs. I well, mean, that means I, that means I won the bet, and that's more important than anything. Mm, it's up there. Okay. 
Uh, I'm taking South Carolina. I mean, listen, Mert, Mertz ain't it. Um, their defense has been – for Florida to normally be a defensive-minded team, but their defense has not been good. I mean, they gave up 300 yards to that dude at Kentucky. Um, their best receiver is what Ricky Pearsall, who it's – He's a probably number two, number three on anybody else's yeah. team. He did make that one really good catch. He's, he's good. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I just – you like know, I, I will say their, uh, their running back room is, is really, really good. With NTN, I can't remember what the other guy's name is, but they're solid. Uh, but going to South Carolina, that place would be rocking. I'm going to take, take the Gamecocks. Yeah, I'm taking South Carolina as well, really just because I don't like Florida. Um, That's fair. For really no other reason. Um, I think – Obviously, the game will depend on Spencer Rattler. If he's playing well, then I, I think they – I actually think they handle him pretty easily. But if he's off, then, you yeah. know, it could. But I like you – I mean, Florida's just – I think they're going to struggle to score. I mean, there's – Mertz is bad. I mean, yeah. so I'll take South Carolina. Well, if you, I mean, if you think South Carolina put a, a full game together like they played against Georgia, I, I don't think it, it will be close. But I, right. I think South Carolina wins. I think it's a 10- to 14-point game. Beamer ball. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, you got USC getting three points at Notre Dame going into South Bend. I'm assuming this will be a night game. We at 7:30 uh, NBC. Mm-hmm. So I'm going. Uh, I'm going Notre Dame. Really, yeah. really. I think uh, them coming off that upset. Well, I mean, number one, I can't say that because I, I called it Louisville to beat them last week. But uh, I think that Notre Dame is going to be the best defensive team that USC has played all year, uh, and honestly, probably will play until they play against Oregon. Uh, I think the offense will get clicking. I mean, USC has been abysmal on defense. I mean, they have been Bad. that way for, for a while. Uh, Who did they play, like Arizona last week? Yeah, and triple, it was tri- overtime? triple overtime. I mean, it's embarrassing. Yeah, and uh, I think that uh, Sam shout – out, Shout out Wyatt Curry, diehard USC fan. Yeah, I mean, my boy Roger died with him, so I can't say him. He's, he's loyal with him. Uh, but I think this week, Hartman – you know, their offense isn't bad. They run the ball a decent amount. They always got good tight ends. And I think that they'll be able to limit um, – they'll be able to limit Caleb Williams. I can say a lot, but I think they'll they'll force some turnovers. And I mm-hmm. think they uh, – yeah, I think they win like a 31-28 type game. JT? Well, I don't really watch much more than the SEC, but I'm going to have to go with Notre Dame yeah. just because – Notre Dame. Most football is hard to watch outside of the SEC, but that's not true. But go ahead. I agree with you. So um, I, I'm gonna take. I mean, my my mind wants to immediately go USC just because of right. Caleb Williams and, and their high powered offense and different things like. And meanwhile, let me let me go back to when we were making our Heisman picks. I'm pretty sure everybody in here gave me a fit about Caleb Williams because he can't do it again, blah, blah, blah. And meanwhile, he's like in the front runner for the Heisman again. So we'll, we'll talk about I mean, that one. That's not to say that. That he couldn't do it again. We have to go back. I have to go back. Yeah, I'll find the clip. Yeah. So I think um, you're just pulling crap out of your back. That's not. I'm not. I'll take Notre Dame at home. Um, I just don't like USC. I don't really like Notre Dame either. But it's the lesser of the two evils for me. And so I do. I do like Sam Hartman. And like you were saying, kind of. I just. I think USC's defense is bad. So I think Notre Dame will score. And then I think Notre Dame's defense will be good enough to keep them. You know, keep keep USC yeah, down think, a little and bit. I think if you look back, you know, US like who they played Louisville. You know, Louisville's kind of a spread type team. Uh, you know, it's not like I, I don't know. I, th- I think that they'll be kind of, they'll be ready for UC, uh, USC coming in. Like I said, Williams is good, man, but I don't think that I don't think they're going to see a defense that they've seen with Notre Dame um, all year. And I don't think that I think I think they'll re- they'll respond well to to a loss because I make mean, they still have New Year's Six. Mm-hmm. No potential. Mm-hmm. They're knocked out of the playoffs, but they pull a big, you know, upset win against USC and went out. I mean, they're still a New Year New Year Six bowl team. So right, right. All right, you got a good one here. Top ten matchup: uh, Oregon. From what I saw on ESPN, Oregon getting three going into Washington. So Mitch's Mitch's Heisman sleeper Penix fitting to get his true test. And I, I you sent us something in a text yesterday, or Ed at one of y'all. I think it was, Ed. It was Edwards. That said, uh, Oregon and Georgia are the only two teams with what was it a top top ten scoring offense and defense. Yeah. So, yeah. what do you what do you think about that game, Oregon Washington? Uh, I'm going to take the Ducks. Um, I think that Washington has been a great story, but I don't think that they're as deep um, as Oregon is. I mean, and obviously, being a Georgia fan, you know, landing out there, they're going to be physical on defense. Um, they're going to run the ball on offense, but they're still going to have that West Coast where they're going to spread it out some. Uh, I think that Bo Nix is going to have a really big game. Uh, Bo knows. 
Yeah, Bo knows. So uh, I think it'll be I think it'll be close at first, but I think Oregon kind of pulls away late. I'm just not a, a big believer in uh, in Washington. I do think Penix is really good, but I, I don't believe in Washington as a whole. So I'm gonna take the Dogs. This is another game outside the SEC here, by the yeah, way. Yeah, also going to have to go with Oregon just from watching them put the work on uh, – what's their name? Col- a couple Colorado. Of weeks. Yep, Colorado, Colorado a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it's hard for me to go against Dan Lanning, uh, former Georgia uh, Georgia defense coordinator. So – and I just it's hard for me to pick Washington in football. I know they just – I don't know. So, Oregon. Oregon. I think Oregon wins big, actually. So, that's my call there. All right. The last one, and we're running out of time here too, so it works out well, is Miami getting three and a half at North Carolina. So let's pick this game first, and then we'll briefly speak on last week's game. JT, Miami plus three and a half heading into North Carolina. Well, don't really watch either one of these teams either. I'm going to have to go with North Carolina, though. It's the ACC, bad conference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rush? Um, I've kind of gone back and forth on this. Because I feel like, I mean, I want Miami to lose. Uh, but I also know I want them to win because when they come to Tallahassee, I would love for it to be game day. Mm. And them crapping the bed against Tech kind of hurt those chances. Uh, but I do think they're going to come out and I think they're going to play a lot better. I think they're going to – Crystal Ball, even though he is a moron, uh, is going to try to get the locker room bought in to, like, to knock the rest of the noise out, uh, you know, from the outside coming in. So I think they go out. I think they play better. But I think Drake May is really good and uh, – I think North Carolina is a lot is surprisingly good on defense. So I'm gonna take the Tar Heels. I'm going to go with the Tar Heels as well. The Tar Hell. Tar Heels. The Tar Heels? Tar Heels. Hellhounds. Mac Brown. Okay. I mean he's old. I mean essentially Joe Biden. Yeah. Uh, president at uh, at head coach North Carolina. <clears throat> but I think that the blunder from last week in Miami's game is just gonna be too I think it's still it's been the topic of conversation all week. I'm sure everybody's been giving those kids and those coaches a fit over there. I feel bad for the I feel bad for the running back, man. Like, dude's in tears, and then Crystal Ball kind of throws him out to the dogs in this post game interview. What a jerk. So I, I will take I will take North Carolina, but you know you you look at that game like is would that go down as one of the biggest coaching blunders you've seen? It's bad, man. I mean, if you kneel on it right there, what it is like I was listening to somebody yesterday. They were talking about he was patting stats. So that guy was at ninety four yards, and they were trying to get to a hundred yard rush, and he he had like one hundred and one when he got tackled or whatever it was. But yeah, I mean, like anybody just. I mean, you risk injury. I mean, that guy gets hurt. Which right I still there. think is is wild. Is in football, like I get teams that are always in the gun. They're in the pistol, but like when it's time, get under center. Oh, like a bad snap, and when you're trying to ice the game right there, that's. I mean, you roll one back, send it over his head. Quarterback just drops it. Like I don't know, get under center. But yeah, just take a knee, man. Like I mean, that's that's basic football one on one. And especially a team like Miami, where Chris Ball is. His whole goal was to go down there and change the culture and get them back to Miami football, and they here they are undefeated going into that game. I, what I what I didn't like was is that he he threw the back under the bus. I don't know if you I didn't see that heard what he said, but he was basically you know we talk about always keeping two hands in the football, but like you know what, dude, you shouldn't be in that position. That's right. Like you're you're the head coach, crystal ball. Get it, which is, I mean I love Miami getting negative publicity. I mean that's great. You know, the heck with you. Mm-hmm. It sucks to be you as, as the Noel fans say, but uh. I don't know, man. I would love for him to win this week just so we could try to get a college game day in Tallahassee, but not going to happen. No, nah, because they screwed the pooch. Okay. That's what it is. Well, JT, man, yeah. we appreciate you getting up bright early this morning and coming oh. being on the show, oh. filling in for the two uglies. Hope you enjoyed yeah. it, man. I did. The ugly and the stinky. Ugly and the stinky. Roger, bring us home. Yes, yeah, so make sure you continue to listen to us. Get five-star review and subscription. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Uh, if you're listening anywhere, give us a thumbs up. You can always check out our website at www.thebiguglysportsshow.com. Uh, you can email us at biguglysports at gmail.com. Any questions you want us to talk about, any topics, anything like that, hit us up uh, through email or on social media. Again, state champion JT Bowers on set today. The run to repeat his state title starts here in a couple weeks, so we wish him the best. Wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, JT, you can do this with us. Get on that bus. Get up on that bus. That bus. Yeah, but sometimes in they cut, they call me Bebo Lottie. We stay with the facts that you know we gon' discuss. Fussing or fighting, yeah, we get up on that bus. Young.